Welcome to part 9 of the Crash Bandicoot 3 commentary, ladies and gentlemen. Let's say we begin the last, final tier of this game here. Well, I mean... The hell were you doing on that the, bridge? <laughs> not the last tier. Also, why aren't you doing the levels in order? <laughs> John. Yeah, John, why? We're doing Flaming Passion first, because as you saw from the, the, the loot we can get here, the green gem's here. And the green gem is required to get everything in one other level in this tier. So, you know what? We might as well do it first. So, let's go. Sorry. This is, like, the only time that this game does that, too. Where, you know, the colored gem is something that you can get before you play the level you require it in. Yeah, because the, the level that is required in to 100% is Gone Tomorrow, which is the first level of this place. Also, Gone Tomorrow is a f is, is is another future frenzy zone. So yeah. yes. it, we just we, we just did that. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of tired. <laughs> <laughs> I have a flaming passion to not do that right now. So let's <laughs> okay. Again, another level that often when I time try when I do the time trial alone, I go for the platinum because. I, I can't, you, you, you know, when you have such a specific way of doing something, you can't ever not do it that way ever again. Fuck that gypsy. <laughs> Fuck that gypsy right there. <laughs> because that gypsy right there is what I call the platinum killer. Because whether or not I get a platinum is up to whether or not it wants to throw a fucking fireball while I'm in the middle of climbing that vertical shaft. Most of the time <laughs> it does. And there's not a goddamn thing I can do about it until it's on screen. Well, well, you could prepare for it beforehand, and, you know... When you're playing like, the level normally, you can always pull out the bazooka and just shoot at it, but but the thing about the bazooka is it shoots at the cursor, even if that means shooting into the background. So you can't it's, it's, shoot it's, off... It's funny, because... <laughs> you can't shoot off the sides of the screen. The bazooka was that one upgrade, like, when I was young. It's like, oh, fucking A... A bazooka. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, uh, and, I, and, I, and I got a lot of use out of it, but then when you start putting so much emphasis on time trials, you know, just for the sake of getting better time, it's like, oh, fuck me, the bazooka. <laughs> yeah. Like, how, do you, bazooka yeah. how do you active... The how do you activate very... it? Um, uh, you I hold L2 sh to whip it out. Yeah. Uh, you aim, and then you hit the circle button. Okay, so it's not, it's definitely not something you could, like, run and gun with. Uh, then. No, okay. no, no. No, it's very much a stop and shoot thing. Now, uh, John made sure to get a certain box before going on the death panel thing. So, yeah, make sure you do that before you get on, on, on the death platform. Well, unless you want to kill yourself and go back to before the death panel, but that would be kind of silly. Why? <laughs> because there's no reason. Now the fruit bazooka does have the fruit bazooka does have utility, and it is required for a few things. Like for instance, there are some levels that have nitro boxes, but don't necessarily have the green exclamation box. You are required to destroy those nitro boxes yourself with the bazooka. So do you need to have fruit in order to use the bazooka? No, uh, no, no, no. no. No, it, 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 it's... It, you might think so, but no. This is another yeah, it's, case it's funny. Why it, can't... Would, would, it be, would it be feasible, if unorthodox as fuck, for Crash to aim the bazooka at his face, shoot a hundred times to get an extra life? <laughs> <laughs> uh, John, why did you blow up all those jumping uh, boxes instead of just jumping Those are boxes. Them? Those, they're but boxes. you could jump those on boxes. them and break well, them by they're jumping. They're boxes. They, jumping. they can't... No, no you can't break them then, then you'll fall down. <laughs> no, you, you can't no, you break jump them. On, you... you can't break them by jumping on them. No, that's what the arrow means. They'll bounce you up. The only way to break a uh... um, an arrow box is to either spin on it or shoot it with the bazooka. Uh, and if you okay. spin on it while you're jumping on it, you're you an die. idiot. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, you are playing as Crash, so... <laughs> cool. All right. Okay, uh, here today, gone tomorrow. Back to the future we go. Again. <laughs> 
I want the Gone Tomorrow. Box. Really, the only difference, is, the only difference between Gone Tomorrow and Future Frenzy, is this guy over here that you see. Looks kind of menacing. Shoots about three missiles, then he gets tired, reveals the target on his ass, and you give it a spin. You can also use the bazooka. It's what the guide says, but you can just spin on it. It's fine. You got yeah. the game guide for Crash Three? Uh, no, I, I don't. Have, I don't uh, know what. Uh, there was a there was a a really comprehensive guide to Crash Three in a gaming magazine. I think it was GamePro, um, and that was yeah. what I had. And yeah, I distinctly remember it giving me that advice. That's what I had for Crash Two and Crash Three. Yeah, the yeah. robots were also given a bit of a buff in um, the PAL version. In this version, they shoot three missiles. In PAL, they shoot four. Who makes? Who decides all of these random uh, these random changes to? Uh, do between you know, I versions. don't know. Like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna change how many specific missiles this one guy does, and that's it. Okay, that's a, that's a little. Did random. you guys always? <laughs> did, did you guys always have a game like that where you were always curious to play the international version of just to see the little nuances or differences, if any? I've had games where I've wanted to see what the translation was like in other, um, in other, uh, in other countries, but never like to see like how many missiles a specific what? robot. Wait, why, why aren't you going to get the boxes? The arrow box? And the, oh. No, the exclamation point box is on this path, and he has to go back to it. Oh. That's really obtuse. You have to... Um, the exclamation boxes reveal only some of the boxes. The other outlines can only be filled by taking the green gem pathway and activating that exclamation box. You notice, during that route, I left the wooden... Uh, arrow box alone. You have to do that if you want to get that box up there. Because I think it's yeah. just out of sight so that you can't get it with your bazooka. You mm. also notice that I left that stack of uh, the boxes in TNT alone because there's an outline down there. And again, you need the TNT box for that because your bazooka can't reach it. In fact, this bonus room gives you the idea of how it works. And an interesting thing about shooting the bazooka, though, if you shoot a wumpa fruit with the bazooka, somehow you get the fruit? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't it. understand that. <laughs> it's like every other form of attack in the game sends the fruit flying off the level. Well, except for the body slam. The body slam, for some reason, lets you collect the fruit. I, I don't really understand why. Crash 3, uh, alright, so, like, in, like, in the original and in Crash 2, you can press the triangle button during gameplay to get an idea of how many lives you have. <laughs> yeah. That, that's a pretty interesting demo, I like that. Uh, you can see, you can get your live total, you can get how many Wumpa Fruit you have, and you can see your box total. In Crash 3, you can now also see the total amount in the entire stage. Yeah. Now, I used to think, oh yeah, I love how the enemies just disappeared there the moment I got on the green gym. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> now, originally, I used to think that was a neat little add-on, like seeing the total box count for the stage, but then I realized that doesn't really mean anything if, you know, by the end of the stage, if I'm missing something, I won't, like, know exactly what I'm missing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not as, it's it does, not as helpful as I used to think it is. It, it does allow you to gauge how many boxes you have at a, at, at, at a given checkpoint, so that you can keep... Um, track of your progress as you play through a level, and it's 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 helpful if you're going by a guide that tells you, okay, by this checkpoint you should have X number of boxes. Do you have them? In Crash Two, you could only see the total number of boxes until the. Well, yeah, yeah, but. The and in Crash Two, you could only see that at the end. Well, no, in Crash but Two, you can see how many boxes you've broken. Yeah, but... But it doesn't you give you the total oh. amount. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you see what I mean? That, that, that's, what, that, that's what I was getting at. Yeah, I see. Oh, still. It's nice to have. If right, there you go. I like how, for, for once, the game ha takes mercy on you and, you know, drops you off next to the box instead of making you backtrack to it. I was like, look, we just realized you play Future Frenzy. I'm, I'm so sorry. The first time I played the level, I was like, oh, I gotta go I gotta go further into the level. I gotta get an exclamation point box, and then I gotta go back and get the, that one box. But no, the green gem just drops you off at it. 
It so suddenly nice. decides to show mercy. So merciful, this Crash Bandicoot 3. Alright, destroy the bottom box first. And then let that happen. Because without that, you can't get those two boxes there. It's very yeah. particular about the order in which you... I don't remember the first two Crash games being this picky about how you get specific boxes. Um, is that just me misremembering it, or was it actually like that? There were a few cases where things could get pretty particular, and you had to do a sort of a jumping puzzle in order to get all the boxes in an area. But only a few. Yeah. Crash 3 definitely does it more. Yeah, Crash 2 definitely does it more, and the most I can think of, the, like, the most perplexing the the jump the box puzzles ever get was that you would have to jump on a wooden box before activating the exclamation box otherwise the steel crates that you formed blocks the box and you can't get it anymore yeah i think that's about as deep as it ever got in earlier games i like how the thing literally has a bullseye on its ass <laughs> why does it turn around and wave its ass at me <laughs> I don't know. Why wouldn't it, John? <laughs> Isn't that the more important <laughs> question? Oh, I watched Dude Raider 2. <laughs> and that's actually, he means the sequel. He means the sequel, Dude Raider 2. You know, I don't know. I don't, think, I, I don't think it really hit the same emotional core that Dude Raider 1 had. Well, you know, the polygon it, it count was higher, though. Like that. And there was more environmental variety. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you know what I mean. <laughs> Alright, this is our final motorcycle level. Well, Thank I, I mean, I guess God. Area 51 is supposed to be the final... It's supposed to be the final motorcycle level, but Orange Asphalt is usually the final one for me because I'm I'm doing Area 51 beforehand. Uh, Orange Asphalt, though, you know, I, I kind of find one of the easier ones, despite its placement. Yeah, it's... Uh... The, the track is not too... The track is not too strenuous. The pit holes never really gave me a problem. Not even the police cars that are in constant... You know, constantly trying to parallel park in the middle of the road. <laughs> <laughs> they just can't K-turn for shit. Yeah. What? <laughs> it's like cut, Where cut the hell are we even time. going on this... On this... Any, th you know, this is the most boring time travel location ever. Where you sent... Oh, about your time. Just in the middle of the desert on the highway. Okay, yeah, whatever. Thanks. Um, <laughs> nah, nah. This is the 80s. Now it's in the 50s. Hmm. 50s? Hmm. Maybe. Yeah, because when, when I think of hot rods, I think 50s. Oh, yeah. Or 60s at the very least. Yeah, but like within like three decades of your own time is boring. Oh, yeah, yeah, honestly. look. That, that, sign we just, that, that sign we just passed. Five cent soda. I ain't, I know fucking sure soda wants to five fucking sets in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, does doing a wheelie do anything? Oh, you missed! Damn it! <laughs> and there's no way to turn around. I'm guessing. No, right? actually, there is there's not no way a way to turn around. around. If you try to turn around, or did I? Why? What? What? Yep. I you that clearly box. missed, missed it. the box. <laughs> That box counted. Again, your hitbox on the motorcycle is deceptively huge. The, the box was off the screen. <laughs> oh, man. But my hitbox wasn't. <laughs> I thought is... I missed that box, too. Man. That is... That's something. Wow. <laughs> aku, Aku, you clearly crashed. You clearly missed that box. <laughs> Go back Go and, back do, and it do it right. again, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a real gem, it's a bronze gem. A super guide gem. <laughs> it's a cubic zirconium crash. What, so does Cosmic Coco come and finish the break the box for you, then? <laughs> 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 uh, our second biplane level, this time Crash takes the helm. Yeah. Doesn't control any different than what Coco drives. Yeah. The the only real like uh, the only a real aesthetic difference is that the sky and the ground are different, and I guess they decided that wasn't enough. So this time we're crashing a biplane instead of um, Coco in a, a World War II bomber. D uh, does Crash have 
a smaller hitbox, because I think I remember Coco's wings being an awful lot longer than Crash's. Um, yeah, C right Coco's now. wings were longer, but she was in a single, uh, a single wing plane. Yeah, I think only the cockpit hmm. counts as the hitbox, so I don't think it matters that are there. Not so much the wings. One of the things about the plane levels is you got to hit the boxes with your gun to get the stuff that's inside them. But if you hit the balloon, the boxes will fall to the ground and break. You just won't get anything for it. Like, it'll count yeah. towards gem. It still gem. counts. Yeah. Yeah, it, exactly. it counts toward gem completion, but only toward gem completion. So if you want that extra life, you got to hit the you got to hit the box, not the balloon. On the other hand, sometimes you do yeah. want to hit the balloon, like in the case of those health power-ups. Yeah. Oh, well, actually, you can shoot the box, and you still get the health power-up. Oh, I yeah? have tested that. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. then there's basically no reason to aim for the balloon, except for the fact that it's larger and therefore easier to hit. <laughs> I think that's, you know, I gotta get a move on. I don't have time to aim. Now, the thing about these giant biplanes is that unlike the blimps, which you just shoot at and they don't move around a lot, you actually, I think, have to hit the engines of the biplanes. So, you, you, this is a bit more complicated than the last one. But, um... Now, this is, uh... According to the manual, or, or at least the Bandipedia, the, the Crash Bandicoot wiki says that these biplane levels take place in the World War One era? Yeah, yeah, the biplanes are World I don't know, War One. those kind of look like Neocort... <laughs> yeah. Biplanes are World War One. Um, uh, uh, single wing planes are World War Two. That sounds uh, like it makes sense. I mean, I'm not a aviation expert by any stretch of the imagination, but... Hey, I am. Planes fly. <laughs> <laughs> True or words have never been spoken. <laughs> I'm not wrong. <laughs>